Your Excellency Archbishop Perez, all the overseeing confreres of the servant of God, his family, friends, and guests here present, those of you joining us by live stream. I am Monsignor Daniel Sullivan, the Vicar for Clergy, a Vicar for Retired and Infirm Priests in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. And it's my honor to welcome all of you to this closing session of the Archdiocesan phase of the cause of the beatification and canonization of Father William Atkinson. Our gathering this evening will complete a process that we initiated more than four years ago. As we proceed, I'll attempt to explain the formalities for everyone, but the first of them is to call this meeting to order. So let's now begin this 45th and closing session of the Archdiocesan phase of the cause of beatification and canonization of the servant of God, William Atkinson, a professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the year of our Lord, 2021, on this, the 19th day of October at 6.30 p.m., at St. Thomas of Villanova Church in Villanova, Pennsylvania, before the Archbishop, in the presence of the Episcopal Delegate, the Promoter of Justice, the Notary, the Substitute Notary, and the Postulator General, all duly cited, we are gathered to close the Archdiocesan inquiry into the life, heroic virtues, reputations of holiness and of intercessory power of the servant of God, William Atkinson, a professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine. And I'll invite Archbishop Perez to lead us in the opening prayer. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, especially those gathered here and online, in witness to the work of holiness in the church. Kindle in them the fire of your love, so that they may live the call to holiness that is proper to each of them. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth by raising up the witnesses of saints among us. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, inspire you inspired the servant of God, Father Bill Atkinson, and you have taught the hearts of your faithful people through his exemplary life, virtues, and reputation. Help us to know what is true and right and good, and to rejoice always in your consolation as we commend this cause of Father Atkinson to your providential guidance. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> The inquiry associated with the cause of beatification and canonization typically takes many years to complete. I now invite Monsignor Jeremy Measure, the promoter of justice, to offer us a summary of the steps undertaken by this tribunal during the particular place which we will close this evening. The opening session of the Dawson phase of the cause of beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Augustinian Father William Atkinson, was conducted by Archbishop Charles Chaput in this very church on April 24, 2017. Since then, many steps had to be completed to bring us to this evening, this evening's closing session. First, a commission of three historical experts collected and documented proofs that they would study. This commission cataloged and reviewed 772 documents. At the conclusion of their study, they produced a report on the authenticity and the value of the proofs and offered their judgment on the personality and spirituality of the servant of God appearing in these proofs. They presented their affirmative report to the tribunal on January 24, 2020. The day before that report was presented, we received news of the appointment of a new Archbishop. Archbishop Nelson Perez was installed as the 14th Bishop and the 10th Archbishop of Philadelphia on February 18th, 2020. Among the many tasks he would take up here in the Archdiocese, he assumed responsibility for this cause. 
and subsequently appointed a new Episcopal delegate on July 23rd, 2020. Two experts in theology had also been appointed to review the documentation collected by the Historical Commission for the purpose of creating a report on the life and ministry of the servant of God from a doctoral and moral perspective. They submitted their reports to the tribunal in the fall of 2020. Then the tribunal, that is the Episcopal delegate, promoter of justice, a notary, and an adjunct notary, undertook a year-long process of interviewing witnesses who could testify to life, heroic virtue, and reputation for holiness and for the intercessory power of the servant of God. These included family members, relatives, friends, caregivers, students, and colleagues of the servant of God, and of course, Augustinian confreres. All in all, the tribunal heard from 52 witnesses. Many of you here this evening participated in these depositions, and we are grateful for your testimony. We are also most grateful to Dr. Sean Doyle, the substitute, substitute notary of this cause, who had the arduous task of trans, transcribing all the witness testimonies. In addition to hearing the witnesses, the tribunal had to investigate whether there had been any public cult associated with the servant of God in terms of where he lived, where he was buried, or in any sacred places with which, with which he was associated. While it is permissible for individuals or groups to pray for the intercession of the servant of God, all public cult of an ecclesiastical nature is reserved only to those already beatified or blessed or canonized, the saints. Having investigated the matter, the Episcopal delegate issued a declaration of non-cult on August 9th of this year. A record of all these appointments, oaths, reports, transcripts, decrees, and declarations was then published for review by the Postulator General by, and by me. Following that review, three copies of the material then had to be printed, copied, and authenticated, and packaged for sending to the Congregation for the Causes of the Saint at the Vatican. This is what is in all these boxes that you see here, the last of which will be closed during this session. The detailed process just explained gives you again a, a, a thorough understanding of the life, heroic virtues, and reputation for holiness and for intercessory power of the servant of God. I now invite Father Thomas Daly of the Oblates of St. Francis de Sales, the Episcopal delegate who directed the inquiry, to offer us a sketch of Father Atkinson that has emerged from this proofs gathered. To be clear to everyone, our task as the tribunal for this inquiry was not to determine whether Father William Atkinson is a saint. That judgment is reserved to the Holy Father upon recommendation of the Congregation for the Causes of Saints. Our work consisted only of gathering proofs that could contribute to such a determination. To, pre to appreciate the scope of this work, it is important for everyone to understand what holiness means. Contrary to common assumptions, the church's understanding of holiness is not of something mystical or supernatural, nor is it focused on the accomplishment of exceptional deeds in extraordinary circumstances. Both of those concepts would make holiness something exceedingly rare. Instead, as the Second Vatican Council teaches, holiness is a universal vocation, a way of life in which every one of us is called to assimilate ourselves to Christ in the everyday circumstances of life, according to each one's abilities and duties. In a cause for beatification and canonization, that holiness must be demonstrated in a manner of life considered heroic by way of its total conformity to the divine will, 
and intense fidelity to carrying out the duties of one's state in life through the practice of Christian virtue and an unconditional trust with which one puts himself completely at the disposition of our Lord. In the case of Father Atkinson, his life was defined outwardly by a catastrophic recreational accident in which he was immediately, completely, and permanently paralyzed below, below the neck and shoulder area. More importantly, his life was defined inwardly by the vocation to which God called him as an Augustinian priest. In the 41 years following his accident, an extraordinary lifespan for a quadriplegic, he could do nothing without relying on the assistance of others. Yet he showed a daily determination to live the life God gave him, carrying the cross of his everyday condition and bearing with more than anyone could know. Owing to his deep conviction that God called him to this very life, the servant of God pursued his religious and priestly formation with a spirit of joy and zeal. That period of formation was truly unique. It demanded of him the tenacity to complete his studies despite his handicap and the humility to, de to depend on his confreres and caregivers for their charitable assistance. In the end, it also required a papal dispensation. For in the entire history of the church, no one with his type of paralysis had ever been ordained a priest. Following his ordination, his religious and priestly ministry reflected his ordinary approach to his extraordinary condition. Despite not being able to go anywhere on his own, he could be found everywhere, ministering to others. For nearly 30 years, he interacted with the community at Monsignor Bonner High School by listening with genuine attention, leading with gentle authority, and preaching with authentic conviction and persuasive power. Whenever asked, he willingly celebrated the sacraments for family and friends, students and alumni, and the people of God in local parishes. Likewise, he, he generously offered his time to visit fellow sufferers in rehabilitation hospitals and to offer counsel to anyone and everyone who wished to speak with him. These good works were founded on the servant of God's profound spiritual life. Whether seated in chapel or simply waiting for others to assist him, he spent countless hours in conversation with God. This continual communion with the Lord proved to be a powerful source of his daily inspiration on which he drew for his own life and for guiding others in theirs. In all of this, the servant of God exemplified what a virtuous life means. He practiced the theological virtues in the faith that this life was what God meant for him, in the hope that led him never to complain or despair, and in the charity by which he regularly gave his time and counsel to others in need. He practiced the cardinal virtues, with a prudence that governed his care of himself and of those who confided themselves to him, with a justice toward God and neighbor that proved beneficial to so many students and alumni, with a temperance that gave him a steady calmness in the face of everyday adversity, and with a fortitude that inspired others to see what he often said, that a meaningful life is found more in accepting what we receive from God than in seeking 
what we want for ourselves. And he practiced the evangelical virtues in embracing the poverty by which he was stripped of every physical dimension to human independence. The obedience by which he acceded to the will of his superiors in his apostolic assignments. And the chastity by which he showed a true Christian love to all persons in his life. Rising above his physical condition to practice the Christian virtues habitually and heroically, the servant of God came to enjoy a reputation for holiness and for intercessory power. During his life and through his ministry, he touched a vast number of people with exemplary simplicity and humility. Since his death, his reputation for holiness has spread through the international apostolates of the Augustinians, through news stories and documentaries produced by national media outlets, and through countless stories related by alumni of Monsignor Bonner High School and Villanova University, who now reside throughout the country and the world. And still today, his reputation for intercessory power continues to grow as the result of educational efforts in parishes and schools, as well as, well as grassroots prayer movements advanced by the power of social media. In sum, our inquiry into the life and reputation of this servant of God has found sufficient evidence to substantiate of him what was proclaimed a century ago in reference to the holiness of another saint from this archdiocese. Speaking of John Newman, the fourth bishop of Philadelphia, Pope Benedict XV taught that the one norm for heroic virtue is the faithful, perpetual, and constant carrying out of the duties and obligations of one's proper state in life. And that even the most simple of works, when performed with constant perfection, spell heroism in any servant of God. In light of that understanding of holiness in the church and of the proofs gathered during this inquiry and with the concurrence of the other officials of this tribunal, I, as the Episcopal delegate, hereby recommend that we proceed to the closing of this diocesan phase of the cause of beatification and canonization of the servant of God, William Atkinson a professed priest in the order of St. Augustine. Thank you, Father Daly. Archbishop Perez. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let it be known by all that in the year of our Lord, 2021, on the 19th day of October, at St. Thomas of Villanova Church in Villanova, Pennsylvania, I, the Most Reverend Nelson J. Perez, Archbishop of Philadelphia, in the presence of the Episcopal Delegate, the Promoter of Justice, and the Notaries, have ordered the closing of the diocesan phase of the inquiry into the life, heroic virtues, and reputation of holiness and of intercessory power of the servant of God, William Atkinson, a professed priest of the order of St. Augustine, given at Villanova the 19th day, October 2021. The various officials who played roles in the inquiry will now pronounce, sign, and seal an oath attesting to their work. 
First, the Archbishop. And next, the Episcopal Delegate. In the name of our Lord, I, Most Reverend Nelson J. Perez, Archbishop of Philadelphia, swear that I have fulfilled faithfully and diligently the charge that was given to me in this process concerning the life, heroic virtues, and reputation of holiness and of the intercessory power of the servant of God, William Atkinson, a professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine, and that I will continue to maintain the secrecy of my office. Now the Episcopal Delegate. There's a lot of signing goes on here, just in case you were a lot of, a lot of signing. In the name of our Lord, I, Reverend Thomas Francis Daly, Episcopal Delegate, swear that I have fulfilled faithfully and diligently the charge that was given to me in this process concerning the life, heroic virtues, and reputation of holiness and of intercessory power of the servant of God, William Atkinson, a professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine, and that I will continue to maintain the secrecy of my office. Next, the promoter of justice. In the name of our Lord, I, Reverend Monsignor Jared C. Measure, promoter of justice, swear that I have fulfilled faithfully and diligently the charge that was given to me in this process concerning the life, heroic virtues, and reputation of holiness and of intercessory power of the servant of God, William Atkinson, the professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine, and I will continue to maintain the secrecy of my office. Now the notary for the cause. In the name of our Lord, I, Reverend Sean P. Bransfield, notary, swear that I have fulfilled faithfully and diligently the charge that was given to me in this process concerning the life, heroic virtues, and reputation of holiness and of intercessory power of the servant of God, William Atkinson, a professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine, and that I will continue to maintain the secrecy of my office. Now the substitute notary. In the name of our Lord, I, Sean T. Doyle, substitute notary, swear that I have fulfilled faithfully and diligently the charge that was given to me in this process concerning the life, heroic virtues, and reputation of holiness and of intercessory power of the servant of God, William Atkinson, a professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine, and that I will continue to maintain the secrecy of my office. And finally, the <clears throat> Postulator General. <clears throat> In the name of, the, of our Lord, I, Reverend Yosef Shiberas, Postulator General, swear that I have fulfilled faithfully and diligently the charge that was given to me in this process concerning the life, heroic virtues, and reputation of holiness and of 
intercessory power of the servant of God, William Atkinson, a professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine, and that I will continue to maintain the secrecy of my office. And the Archbishop will now pronounce the various orders by which this phase of the cause is to be closed. I, Most Reverend Nelson J. Perez, Archbishop of Philadelphia, in the presence of the Episcopal Delegate, the Promoter of Justice, and the Notaries, hereby order the inclusion of the minutes of this closing session in the acts of this cause. I, Most Reverend Nelson J. Perez, Archbishop of Philadelphia, in the presence of the Episcopal Delegate, the Promoter of Justice, and the Notaries, hereby order that the original acts of this diocesan phase of the cause of beatification and canonization of William Atkinson, a professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine, which have been presented to me at this session, be closed, sealed, and kept in the archives of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. I, Most Reverend Nelson J. Perez, Archbishop of Philadelphia, in the presence of the Episcopal Delegate, the Promoter of Justice, and the Notaries, hereby order that the transcript and public copy of the acts of this diocesan phase of the cause of beatification and canonization of William Atkinson, a professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine, which have been presented to me at this session be closed, sealed, and transmitted to the congregation for the causes of saints.
the documentation of the archdiocesan phase of the cause will be transmitted to the Vatican under the auspices of an official carrier. I now invite Father Joseph Severus, who resides in Rome, as the postulator general of the Augustinians to assume this task. In the name of our Lord, I, Reverend Joseph Shiberas, swear that I will faithfully execute my responsibility of transmitting the transcript and public copy of the acts of the diocesan inquiry into the cause of beatification and canonization of the servant of God, William Atkinson, a professed priest of the Order of St. Augustine, to the congregation of the causes of saints, together with the envelope containing the letters of Archbishop Nelson J. Perez, the Episcopal Delegate, Reverend Thomas F. Daly, and the promoter of justice, Reverend Monsignor Gerard Mejour, as well as the instrument of closing. In addition to overseeing the transmittal of the documentation, Father Scabiris will deliver two additional packets of information already signed, stamped, and sealed. The first is the envelope of letters in which the Episcopal delegate and the promoter of justice each attest to the trustworthiness of the witnesses, affirm the legitimacy of the process, and offer insight about the cause, which may now prove useful to the Vatican officials. The second, is the instrument of closing, by which the Archbishop certifies the content of all these packages and declares that they have been properly sealed. And with that, I announce that this 45th session is formally closed. What will happen next is that get together with Fathers Kabiris and accompanied by Monsignor Measure, Father Daly, and Father Bransfield, the Archbishop will meet with the Cardinal Prefect of the Congregation for the Causes of Saints at the Vatican to hand over all these records of the cause. The meeting is scheduled for the first week of December. But please note that their meeting is not the end of the line. The fact that we have successfully closed this phase does not imply that the cause of Father Atkinson will result in beatification or canonization. Much work has yet to be done to reach that sacred conclusion. For this reason, it's my duty to remind everyone that no public celebration or ecclesiastical cult in Father Atkinson's honor may be offered unless and until the Church officially decrees that it may do so. And before we depart this evening, We'd like to have a few closing remarks from our host, Father Michael Di Gregorio, the prior provincial of the Augustinians. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for coming to this closing ceremony. As is very obvious to us from what we've just witnessed, in addition to heroic virtue, what is also needed for canonization is a lot of ink and paper. <clears throat> but following the words of Monsignor Sullivan, uh, in terms of the work that still remains to be done, I would like to suggest that that work is largely in our hands. For us to take the message of Father Atkinson's life, his witness, the message that he proclaimed through his ministry, and to make others aware. The awareness of Father Bill Atkinson is so vitally important to the possibility of the continuation of the cause. So I ask each of you to please take that on as a responsibility and an opportunity 
to be able to extend to others um, the kind of compassion and comfort and security that many of us have received through the intercessory prayer that is part of this cause. The first Augustinians arrived in this country in 1796. And in those more than 200 years since, this is the first time that the Augustinians have celebrated in this country the opening and closing of a diocesan process. So it's certainly a historical moment for us and one for which we're very grateful to God. I'd like to extend my appreciation to all of you for being here and in a particular way to Archbishop Perez for his approval and continuing conduct of this cause together with the members of the tribunal and the commission who have worked so diligently in order to provide all of this material and make it possible for us to gather tonight. I want to recognize the presence in addition to Father Shiberas, the postulated general of our order here from Rome, the presence of our vicar general, Father Joseph Farrell, and in addition to Archbishop Perez, Bishop Senior, and Bishop Coffey, who have graced us also with their presence. And finally, I'd like to invite you to the next phase of our celebration tonight, which will take place in the Connolly Center. We've prepared a buffet for all of you so that we can truly see one another, share stories with one another, and celebrate uh, this event, which has taken form here, but now which will continue wherever we go. Finally, I invite Archbishop Perez to speak and bring this evening's celebration to its conclusion. I was thinking signing all those papers. What happened to carbon paper? Uh, I want to thank uh, all of you for being here tonight. Um, as a bishop now for um, nine years and an, an archbishop for a year and a half, I've never done this. So I was asked uh, uh, by Father Kennedy, who's sitting over there, I said, have you ever done this thing? He says, no, never. But there's always a first. But what, uh, what an honor, what a privilege, what a blessing, what a grace to, to all, for all of us to be a part of this process and to witness history, history of, of the church. I thought as I was doing all this, although I never met Father Atkinson personally, I thought of, of the moment that he began to feel in his heart the call to serve the church as a priest and as a religious. I thought of maybe the days that he maybe came to this very chapel to pray and to talk to the Lord in his heart. Someone said a bunch of times, I'm sure. Um, never knowing that, uh, that decades later, this gathering would be taking place. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Pretty amazing. For the Church of Philadelphia, for the Augustinian order, uh, for the church in the United States, this is a, a, a moment of great blessing and grace. It's a proud moment. It's a proud moment for us uh, here in the church. So thank you all for uh, those who did so much work uh, in this process. Um, I want to thank the, I've uh, got to use my notes for this one, uh, Father Joseph Farrell, the Vicar General of the Augustinian Order, who is represented by the Prior General, um, tonight, uh, Father Joseph Shibaras, the Postulator General who traveled uh, from Rome. Uh, he's the Postulator General for the Augustinian Order. Father Michael D. Gregorio, the Prior of the Province of St. Thomas of Villanova. Thank you so much, Father. We also want to uh, thank those who have significant parts in this, in this process, in this sacred journey. Archbishop Emeritus Charles Chappie, who initiated the cause here in the Archdiocese, Father Gregory Finn and Father Thomas Daly, the Episcopal Delegates, you did a great job. 
Have everything online. Give them a round of applause. And so the Augustinians owe a debt of gratitude to the Oblates. Monsignor Gerald uh, Measure, as the promoter of justice, who's sitting here on my left, and Father Sean Bransfield, Dr. Sean Doyle, and Father James Oliver, and Monsignor Dan Sullivan as notaries. You know, Father Sean is a pitcher for the Phillies, just want to let you know that. I also want to thank uh, Father Richard McFadden as the copyist, Augustinian Father Joseph Ryan, Dr. Patrick Hayes, and Dr. Nicholas uh, Ratchmeyer a mem um, as members of the Historical Commission. I also want to recognize those who are present here uh, who assisted in, in this process in a very particular way, uh, and that's the family of Father Atkinson that's here, in particular Alan and his sister Joan and Betty, uh, who are here. Uh, Mary, I believe, and Patricia were not even able to be with us today. There's all these nieces and nephews. Where are the nieces and nephews, the young people? So imagine the bragging rights that you guys have. My uncle is a servant of God, and God willing, someday a saint. I think they're the only ones around here that could actually say that. I certainly can. <laughs> I have a problem with my own holiness, let alone people in my own family. And uh, his classmates, where are his classmates? There were several uh, people that actually were his classmates. There they are. <laughs> Father Dennis O'Donnell, who's around here somewhere, told me that he used to play basketball with him. Yeah, I don't know. I think he left to play basketball, I guess. <laughs> and again, the uh, Augustinian, your, your brother, your brother. Uh, many of you knew him, walked with him, interacted with him, learned from him, and, and, now, and now, you, um, now you pray to him. Interesting, right? Such, a, such an incredible blessing that this is. And so as we conclude this moment, we're going to pray the uh, prayer. And there's a part in the prayer, if you look at the prayer, it's in the back of the card. After the end of the third paragraph, I'm going to pause and to allow all of us to present to the Lord through the intercession of the servant of God our own intentions tonight. This is a special night. This is a powerful night. This is a night of great blessing and grace. And each one of us in, in our journey, in our families, among our friends, and even ourselves have needs and, and yearnings and hopes and dreams and suffering as well. So I'm going to pause for a little bit so that each one of us can close our eyes and present to the Lord through the servant of God our intentions this night. Please stand. And we could all say it together. Blessed are you, Father of life, source of goodness and peace, in whom all creation has its origin, and by whom every person is loved. In Father Bill Ackeson, your mercy and compassion were made manifest as he brought solace to the suffering and hope to the needy. By carrying the cross of life faithfully, he proclaimed confidence in your love and conformity to your will, and so drew others to you and to the generous gift of your grace.
Hear our prayers, which we offer through this intercession, so that as your word continues to unfold among us, it may bring honor to you, comfort to your people, and according to your will, glory to the servant of God, as is through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Congratulations.